Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Rave reviews for the teen and young adult fiction, A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town from Chip Weinert. I left out loud throughout this satirical novel, exceptionally enjoyable, genuinely funny, and anxious to read more from this funny, highly entertaining author. Now, in a parallel universe where humans evolved not only from apes, but also cats, dogs, bears, weasels, and other animals, Duke Hazard, a feline private eye, is hired to find the murderer of a prominent canine. It's a tongue-in-cheek, fun murder mystery. Think of it as Philip Marlowe meets Fritz the Cat. Jeff Weinert is a former newspaper, magazine writer, editor, and associate publisher, as well as a professional windsurfer. He lives and surfs, windsurfs, fishes, and bikes on Oregon's rogue coast with two canines, who, by the way, thinks he's crazy. Stay tuned for his next book, A Curious Cat Series, A Curious Cat Wags a Fishy Tail. Chip Weinert, author of A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town, joins us on This Week in America. Chip, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thanks, Rick. It's good to be here. Chip, uh, dogs are always sort of judgmental, so I won't hold that against any of them for, for having an opinion. This book is doing so well. Rave reviews. Got to ask about the inspiration. This is a very unique story. Where did this whole story concept come from? You know, it's, it's kind of a cliche, um, but it was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> okay. Here on the southern Oregon coast. And uh, um, there was nothing good on TV. I had nothing in my little apartment to read. Um, so I just decided I'd write my own story. And um, I had just adopted a, a small cat. And uh, he, he became the protagonist of the story. And uh, it, it just kind of flowed from there. And the book we're talking about is A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town by Chip Weinert. If you're Googling, that's W-E-I-N-E-R-T. You'll find the book at the usual places. I'll send you to stratton-press.com in their book section. Get information. You can click on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. How did you come up with the idea for the animal-based characters? I love the concept because we're following and getting involved in the story involving animals. Um, it just seemed that I could um, have a little bit more freedom and, and be a little bit more creative if I wasn't constrained by the, by that they had to be humans. And it gave the characters an, kind of an automatic, um, you know, first glimpse into who they might be. Yes. If you knew that the sheriff was a bear and the guy that ran the the convenience store was a weasel you know you kind of that already set it up originally for me so it it just kind of worked that way i guess we love the characters in the book i mentioned there will be a second let's talk about that are there other books planned for these characters because they're too good to waste on one book you need to have these back on a recurring basis and it, it sounds like you're going to Yes, I, uh, the, I've, I've got a four-book series planned, and the second book should be out within two, three, four weeks, also by Stratton Press, and that book is A Curious Cat Wags a Fishy Tail. Um, then I've got a third book uh, that I'm working on right now called The Curious Cat Goes Over the Handlebars, and then <laughs> there's a fourth book in the series. All four books are kind of based around different sports that I've been involved with throughout my life. Um, the first is about, or it, it centers around surfing and windsurfing. The second book talks about fishing, and here on Oregon's south coast, the fishing is spectacular. The third book talks about mo mountain biking, and the mountain biking around here is pretty, pretty good too. Um, and the fourth book is about surf or, uh, skiing and snowboarding. So those are the four books that I have planned so far. There might be a fifth. I don't know. It just, they just kind of come, come to me. 
When you started this book, A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town, Chip Weinert, the author and our guest on the program, did you have any idea at that point, this could become a series, I could do maybe two, three, four of these, or was it just basically uh, one book that evolved into this series? It was, yeah, it was just one book that evolved into the series. Once I finished the first book, um, you know, it, it's kind of, it's a bittersweet thing. You know, you're, you're finally done with it and everything's looking good. But then there is a question of, well, now what? And since I already had the characters and, you know, invented and had already made this other world in a parallel universe, um, I decided, well, let's just keep going with that. And, you know, it's just fun. And I just, I laugh out loud when I write this stuff. It, I'm just telling myself jokes the whole time <laughs> as I'm writing all this. And it, it comes out great. And, you know, I people have asked me, you know, what did you have planned for these books? What was your message? What were you trying to... And my my idea is basically if one person gets even one of my silly little jokes, then, then it's a success. The book is A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town. Chip Weinert coming to us via Skype. If you check out the video, we've got Skype, and uh, as sometimes happens with Skype, it's sort of in and out with the, with the quality. You'll get a chance to see what's, uh, what Chip looks like, and we'll send you to stratton-press.com to, uh, to get information on the book. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Chip with us to talk about this series. It's receiving rave reviews and some good news, possibly, and we'll talk about that before the program's over. Target audience is always interesting. Interesting. They seem to put this in the teen young adult fiction. I'm cracking up as I'm reading this. I'm reading a lot of the reviews and obviously people a little older than teenagers. What's the target audience or, or, or is there a specific audience for the book? Uh, you know, you know, Rick, I really never really thought of it as going for a particular audience. Um, I was writing it for myself. So I guess it's, you know, I guess the target audience is people like me, <laughs> um, people that just need some escapism once in a while and, you know, just like to laugh, you know, don't take themselves or take the world too seriously all the time. And I guess that's the key. If you entertain yourself in writing, then you've got a good chance of entertaining other people. And that certainly is the case with Chip's book, A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town, you're listening to This Week in America. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, get information on uh, on Chip's book. When you're writing main characters, as you have in the book, do you see yourself or someone you know? Did you did you fashion these characters after yourself or, or other people? Well, the, uh, the main character didn't start out to be it didn't start out to be an autobiographical story <laughs> at all, but the main character is, you know, when my friends read the, the book, they, they know, they're like, well, dude, it's really Matthew, Matthew Hazard, but he gave himself the nickname of Duke because Duke Hazard sounds more private eye-ish. It certainly does. Um, but when my friends read it, they, <laughs> when my friends read it, they, they go, well, you are Duke, aren't you? <laughs> and I guess I am. So it makes it easy. And especially writing in the first, first person, it makes it a lot easier to put myself into that character. Some of the other characters are kind of a combination of people that I've met through my travels and, you know, through the different things that I've done. So there's really, besides myself, there's nobody else in there that's actually a real person where you could point at him at the street and say, you're that guy from that book. Maybe some of the Besides qualities. Me, well, yes. Your question, no. Yes, yeah, maybe a few characteristics of other people, but it's not a complete steal of somebody's, uh, somebody's personality to put in the book. I mentioned your background. Former newspaper, magazine writer, editor, associate publisher, when did you decide, I've got this novel in me, I want to tell the story. Have you always wanted to be an author? Yeah, I've been writing my whole life. I went to school, I've got a, my degree is in uh, journalism, communication and journalism. Um, I, 
you know, I worked at the school newspaper in high school, and I've just always enjoyed putting words on the paper, and, you know, nowadays it's into a keyboard, but, um, yeah, I've always, I've always been writing, I've always been telling them stories. I grew up um, skiing and sailing, and um, as a skier, I, I'd always end up, I'd ski by myself, so I'd end up with somebody else on the chairlift. And I would just make up stories, telling these people <laughs> that I had never met before and I'd probably never see again. Just, I was just making up stories. Oh, yeah, my dad just got back from China, that trip with Nixon, you know, things <laughs> like that. And people would believe me. And I'd just get off the chairlift laughing. So, you know, I've just always been kind of a storyteller. You know, that's interesting as you try to make them believe you are the junior senator from Massachusetts as you're there on, on the ski lift. And you you would laugh as you were leaving. And, and people have said, I wonder if he's laughing. And I think you address that as you're writing. Your stories, whether they're to people on a chairlift in real life or, or you're writing for, uh, these stories are amusing to you as well, which is probably why we find them as amusing as well. Well, that, that's great. I'm, I'm really happy that other people are enjoying it. Um, that's, that's just a bonus for me. I enjoy it, and if somebody else does, that's, that's a bonus. Let's talk about writing comedy. Writing good comedy is difficult to do. You do this effortlessly. Talk about writing good comedy and how, to, how often, if you have to go back and do rewrites and get it so it's, you know, it's obvious, but you're not overstating. Sometimes there's a, uh, there's maybe a challenge. You're going to, you're going to overwrite it. Talk about writing good comedy to make it effective because it, it's a breezy read. It's a fun read. You'll be smiling the entire time you read the book. Uh, talk about the challenges of writing comedy. Well, it's, it, it is, can be, a, it can be a challenge sometimes, Rick. It's, it's, um, you know, my wife passed away a couple of years ago and I wasn't able to write anything that I liked for close to two years because you just have to be in a good mood and you just have to be yes. able to laugh and you have to laugh at yourself. That's, that's a big part of it. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. You have to not take yourself too seriously, um, but you have to be in the right mood for it. And, you know, luckily, I've been you know, fortunate um, throughout my life. I've done some wild, crazy things. And, you know, I've just been able to draw on those experiences and the people I've met through all my travels. And um, but sometimes, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of negative news out there. This pandemic thing that we're going through right now. But there's also, you have to be able to look at the funny side of, every, every story has two sides. There's a dark side and a light side. And you just have to look at the light side of it and write that down. You know, you can't live in the humorous world all the time. Sometimes you have to get serious. Sometimes you have to pay bills. Um, you have to take the garbage out, do things like that. But, you know, if you can make it fun while you're doing it, it, it helps to be able to, sit down and write things down. And sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and just get up and I just have a, a wild dream and I'll wake up laughing and I'll come in and I'll <laughs> write it down. I'll go back just to sleep and don't even remember it until the next morning when I look and see what I wrote. It's like, oh, that's right. I got up in the middle of the night. And uh, it's it can be challenging, um, but it's fun. It's got to make it fun. Well, the book we're talking about is A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town. With us is Chip Weiner. Chip is the, uh, uh, the author of that book, Some Others to Call, uh, to Follow, and I'll, I'll give you those uh, as we're wrapping up the program. The book's available at stratton-press.com in the bookstore, other places as well. Go to our website and link on. It's interesting throughout the, the, the book, you've got radio commercials, and that sort of cracks up the reader as we're going through there because uh, those are relatable. Talk about how you decided to, to, to sort of have your own commercials in, in the book. Well, originally, um, you know, I, I'm involved in local theater here in Gold Beach, Oregon, and uh, a shout out to the Ellensburg Theater Company. Um, and I am 
enjoyed doing radio plays especially, and I put myself through school. Um, I went to Utah State University and I worked for KUSU-FM, um, so I put myself through school as a disc jockey. And um, So I've got a background in radio and just, you know, listening to different you know, make in my mind, I'll make up some product and be like, oh, I can I can make a commercial for that. So originally, when I wrote the book, my original thought was that it would be a radio show, like an old old time radio. Oh yes, yes. Philip Marlowe, or you know, you know, some old, you know, like Blanca or something like that. Um, and uh, so that's where the idea for, for the radio came in. It would be like one act or one scene, and then you go to a commercial, and then after the commercial, you're back to the story. Um, I'm not doing it for the other books, but for that book, it, it seemed to work out well. And a, a minute or so left in the program, you've got this tribute to Columbo in there as well, which uh, has amused a number of people. Talk about uh, <laughs> talk about that Columbo and sort of his style, his 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 fashion style, his interrogation style incorporated in the book as well. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah, he's a he was always a favorite of mine growing up. I used to love him, and I just love the way that he would, you know, interview somebody or ask questions, I'll always be like, oh, one more question. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, well, wait, one more question. And uh, I just really enjoyed it and how he kept the people that he was, uh, that he had talked to, you know, that he had, was interviewing or interrogating, how he would catch them off guard because he'd make them think, Said, oh, good, I made it. You know, I didn't have, have to answer the tough question. Yes. Oh, wait, one more question. You know, and it just, it just would, uh, I always thought it was amusing. I always, I always really enjoyed that show. Well, th you'll enjoy the book, A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town, Chip Weinert, W-E-I-N-E-R-T. That's the first in the series. Chip, let's go back and talk about when you can expect the others. The second one, it sounds like, is going to be out very soon. Yeah, the second one, uh, again, I'm working with Stratton Press on it. They've been wonderful. Um, we've already gone through the second round of edits. Um, we've already gone through layout, and the cover, front cover and back cover are, I haven't quite signed off on them yet, but um, there's some text issues on the back cover. But other than that, it's pretty much ready to go, and that should be out in two, three, maybe four weeks. So. Yeah. That'll be perfect. Um, we'll be looking and, for that. And them. Duke, the the uh, the protagonist, Duke, uh, he the the surf is no good. There's no wind for windsurfing, so his buddy takes him out fishing. And if you pardon the pun, he gets hooked on fishing. <laughs> and uh, that that's how the story goes. That's how the story starts. I won't tell you how the rest of it goes, but that's how the story starts. Well, we'll be looking forward to that. If you go to stratton-press.com, you can get a copy of A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town. It's a great read. It's a funny read. Everything going on in the world, it's a needed read, and you'll find it at Stratton Press. Also, you'll be able, if you check in there, get information on future books, including the one upcoming soon from uh, Chip Weinert. That's W-E-I-N-E-R-T. The book is A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog's Town. Chip, it's been a pleasure having him on the program. Uh, some people refer to him as the junior senator from Massachusetts. We will call him a successful author. I love your approach to life. It, uh, it's going to help all of us get through difficult times here. Thank you, Chip, so much for being with us on the program. Thank you, Rick. And uh, when the next book comes out, hopefully we can talk about that one as well. We'd love to read it and love to be able to talk about it. A Curious Cat in a Dead Dog Town is the book that's out now. Chip Winant, our guest and the author. Book available at stratton-press.com in the book section. Link on our website thisweekinamerica.us and you'll get all the information on Chip's books. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. 
For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.